Hi, it looks like I've got to come on live on a Saturday night. Saturday night live, baby. It's 6.40 on a Saturday. <coughs> I promise I will not cough. It's just that I keep eating these damn cheese. Oh, you don't want to know. It's really a problem, folks. You got to get me off the... Um, well, you know what it is, is I'm eating too much. Guess what I had for dinner tonight? Pasta. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm just getting things set up for people. I'll be with everybody in just a sec. We are going live, as many of you know. Um, Israel is under assault from multiple drone attacks and missile attacks coming in from Iran. Um, and uh, I believe most of the attacks so far have been intercepted. So um, we just want to hold a good thoughts. I'm trying to get set up here. Always takes me a minute. Always takes a minute, as they say. Oh, that's a cute one. I'll put this one up. I'm trying to figure up a good, uh, you know, something nice. While people find their way to the stream, um, I didn't give any warning or anything, so it doesn't surprise me if uh, it's going to take people a while. I'll, I'll get some light in here. So we are here to hang out and hopefully a nice to row reading without all this. Oh my gosh, you guys really showed up. That was fast. I was just putzing around and I look and there's a hundred and something people here. So I take it everyone got the news. Yeah, so this is the first time. First off, welcome everyone. Thank you for the surprise get together on Saturday. Uh, we will be talking more about everything uh, when I see you uh, tomorrow for the Sunday brunch. Unfortunately, Iran has declared war on Israel. Um, there's a lot of evidence that Iran declares war on Israel. Okay, so we have multiple. First, they attacked with the drones. This is something that you really need to tell your Republican friends over and over and over and over again. This is happening because Trump pulled U.S. troops out. Trump pulled U.S. troops out of Syria which and the Assad regime is an ally of Putin and Iran. So that's the, these are the three people who, these are the three uh, countries that are working together that want to take control of trade in this area, Iran, Russia, and Syria. So the only way that Putin was able to achieve that is by getting U.S. troops to withdraw. How many years did the people watching this channel knew, get a heads up that this was going to happen? Four years, five years? You guys want to talk about it? This tastes like tang. This is that orange soda the fermented orange soda, you guys, for your stomach, and then 
if it's too sweet for you, what you can do, it's a probiotic. Do you guys know the probiotic I'm talking about? Um, anyway, um, it's cans of probiotic soda. This is the orange. But anyway, uh, you don't have to drink the entire can, you know, um, but uh, this is about a third of it. And then the rest is seltzer water. It's just a great way of, it's just a, like a kombucha, but it's, there's actually a lot of sugar in these things. And they're often using sugar to ferment the kombucha. So if you like those fermented drinks and you want to get some probiotic, uh, have the recipe seltzer water. It's just a little tip from me to you. If you are trying to keep your digestive health. L'chaim, l'chaim. So also special shout out. I'll mention her again, Diane Tahiri. Thank you so much for your gifts. Am amazing company she has. It's called Dream Cream, Noble Soul. This is the most beautiful smelling stuff I've ever smelled in my entire life. You can smell the lavender and the essential oils. I'm, uh, if you want to get uh, support uh, uh, one of our artists, uh, check out Noble Soul. Nourish, I believe you can get it uh, on Etsy. Noblesoulfarm.com. Noblesoulfarm.com. This stuff is amazing on your feet. I've already put it on my feet. Uh, it's very good at softening, and the essential oils are amazing. The other thing is, is that she has this as well, which is a soothing spray for anxiety, which is probably what we need right now, given... Oh my God, this stuff is incredible. Oh God, I need that. So I'll give you guys an energetic spray too. So uh, this changes the vibration in the room. You can physically feel it. Uh, she's working with the uh, fourth chakra a lot, the heart chakra. And um, this is the most beautiful smelling stuff I've ever smelled in my life. It smells like she's using a very high quality essential oil. Yeah, so Noble Soul, Nourish Your Soul, Noble Soul uh, Farm, Noble Farm, Noble Soul Farm .com. Thank you, Diane Tierra. So, oh, you got the lemon ginger. What's the name? Uh, lolly, lollipops. Lollipops, I think is the name of the company. Yeah. Um, it's still sugar. You know, I still add soda. Also, it's a nice way to stretch your probiotics so that you can get three rather than just going like that. And also the sugar is hard on your teeth and the soda. Just break it into three. And then just tape it closed. You can actually tape it closed. There's ways to seal it. But it will re-ferment also. So if you put it in a bottle and seal it, uh, it will just keep, it, you're not going to lose the fizz probably. It'll just, when it hits room temperature, it starts to ferment again. So what were we talking about? Yeah, so uh, Trump pulled U.S. troops out of Syria. And so the Kurds were not protected and the Israelis were not protected. And then uh, what happened was that Hezbollah moved in. And so this is, um, it was uh, October 23rd, 2019, the head of U.S. Central Command stated there was no end date on the U.S. intervention in Syria. Okay, so 900 U.S. soldiers uh, pull out, yeah, they pulled out Let's see, news. When did Trump pull US troops? Trump, he also pulled them, the rest of them out of Iraq, right? So we basically, we couldn't protect our own, um, and, and it was back, and I think it was uh, Biden that's brought them back. Trump Syria sham, uh, shambles. Yeah. So I think there's just kind of 
one of the things that you learn when you study human psychology is that we all tell ourselves stories. And one of the stories is that Trump is really, really good for Israel. And um, President Trump's withdrawal from Syria has thrown the region into chaos, shattered American credibility, and uncovered deep problems with US policy toward Turkey. So we basically left the area. Uh, this is a uh, cap 20. And uh, then what happens is you have uh, Hezbollah troops. So you have the movement of Hezbollah. So, you know, exit stage left, right? And in, uh, so what's happened since uh, the US left that area is that uh, Hezbollah is um, unfortunately becoming an army that uh, has not, it's, it's, it's basically bringing uh, Lebanon towards uh, into the war because they have this proxy army coming in from Iran and holding Lebanon hostage. So it's a very bizarre situation because um, it's a very bizarre situation because Um, we basically created this situation. First, the first thing that they did to create the situation is that conservatives began insulting people in the area, insulting their religion, and then turned around and left. So if you're looking about the Israel-Lebanon border and Syria, it basically... Um, led to uh, more genocide in Syria, Assad's genocide against his own people, which no one wants to talk about. And it also um, left Israel a sitting duck. So that's basically where we're at. So to, to believe that Donald Trump somehow is good for Israel or is going to some or somehow, you know, look, if you have a brain, you know that it's it's a trade war. It's always been a trade war. Since the Silk Road, it's always been a trade war. And it's East versus West. So if we want to get cheap goods at Saudi Arabian prices because Arab control of the trade routes, then we have to decide who's in and who's out, or they're going to turn around and create their own trade routes, right? We've had this conversation for many years. So China creates their own trade routes. Russia creates their own trade route. They attempt to create a trade route in Libya. Obama comes in, bombs Russia, says no trade route. And then we have this incredible hatred that starts to form uh, between Putin and Obama because he feels boxed in Right. And so uh, he re he starts taking over parts of Ukraine because they want their money from the ports and they want all the money that they've lost from the grain, etc., which they feel they're entitled to. Then he gets together with Hamas in Russia and they secretly meet and then they plan to work with their allies, Iran, to attack Israel so that October 7th was supposed to be part of a wider attack. So they were uh, coordinating with Hezbollah, Hamas and Hezbollah, and Hamas uh, and uh, Putin, possibly because he wanted people to be so bogged down and distracted by what was going on in the Middle East, they wouldn't be focusing on the Ukrainian war. And it would give him an opportunity uh, to uh, take Ukraine because evangelical Christians would theoretically run to protect Israel. And if there were limited resources, they would abandon Ukraine, but they would go to Israel. So this is also part of uh, Putin's logic. Fine. 
Well, let's see what you all have to say. Hi, Marjorie Harrison. Hi, Lisa Rivas. Hi, Stephanie Stevens, Linda Mish Bishop, Dwight Lindgren, Renee S. is here, Sid Shakti, Marjorie Harrison. Who here is not surprised that Putin did everything he said he was going to do? I'm actually very surprised that uh, Iran did attack the Israel because Iran is notoriously a coward and would rather have somebody else fight their battles for them. So they've never directly attacked Israel. And, you know, it's something where we think that probably Iran is not long for this world. They've really uh, created their own grave. First, by funding Hamas, by creating this situation, um, but also, I think this is inevitably the end of Iran. It's created too much instability to uh, that NATO is going to have to respond. That's what I believe. All right, let's do the impasse prayer. Okay. I want to call on white light protection for myself and this community as we ask permission from spirit to access the Akashic records. We call on our spirit guides and our good angels to be with us. Please give us the clarity and the wisdom that is needed to empower all of us on our journeys, to make the best decisions for ourselves, our families, the planet, the people we love, but also to help those that we may have strife with. And together collectively we say, Amen. Yeah, I'm really disappointed by the shocking anti-Semitism I see in PBS and democracy now. You would think that we invaded Gaza and not the other way around. Um, that we were invaded by their government, which is Hamas. And in their charter, they basically call for genocide of the Jews. And so to project their crazy onto the victims is really, they also rejected every ceasefire and continue to fire on Israel. Of course, Israel's gonna respond and use their own people as human shields, which, uh, and, and in the chaos of war, uh, things happen. And this need to demonize Jews, this need to believe that it's always the worst intentions, that is, no, oh, they're secretly plotting, is in and of itself anti-Semitic and offensive to me as an Israeli and a Jew. Um, we're really getting tired of the double standard, you know, and it's often coming from people that don't realize just who they are, what they are. It's usually people living in California, <laughs> you know, occupied Mexico. And, um, or occupied Texas or some other occupied area. And usually they just don't know what they're talking about, but I will get through it, right? We will all get through it. Um, it looks like uh, Israel, uh, so they, they raped, shot a bunch of people in the head, tied them to whatever. The problem, again, when we live in a magical world is we, we edit. Well, I, that's ugly. I don't want to eat that. I don't want to eat that. Well, the problem, if you want to be someone who's capable of seeing objective reality, is that the ugly exists in our world, that there are Nazis in our world, that there are people who are part of a death cult that believe that dying, killing Jews is the best, is what they were born to do. Just like there are crazy people in North Korea that believe that dying, killing Americans is the best thing that they can do. These are cults and they have to be, uh, uh, they're death cults and these people have to be rescued, yes, and they have to be deprogrammed. But it's also important to realize that when people strung out on drugs uh, attack and try and kill you, you do have a right to protect yourself. and. If, you know, like pulling back from Rafa right now, uh, the only thing that's going to happen is they'll rearm and kill more Palestinians. So 
you know, they're saying they don't even have 40 living hostages of the 130 something, 34 that were taken. They say they're mostly dead. This, these, these are not, uh, it's, a, it's a level of evil that it's very hard for me to convey to the average American. I was very naive until I went to the Middle East and saw it for myself, but it's a death cult. That's the best, it's all you can say is it's a death cult. But I think this is the end of Iran. It's all coming from Iran. It's truly a death cult. Let's see about the future of Iran. Religious extremism. You know, it's difficult to have religious sensitivity when the person that you're trying to be religiously sensitive to believes it's part of their purpose in life to kill you. You know what I mean? So um, I don't think I have my thing on right here. Hold on a second. Uh, it's important that I believe in rehabilitation, reprogramming, and, you know, I believe in help in Gaza. That's why I wrote a rebuild. But look at this over Iran, that kind of extremism of the hierophant. But look, the karma of, our, of Iran is peace. King of Cups is coming in over Iran, which means that there could be this person coming in that wants peace. Right now, the Queen of War, the Queen of Rods, she seeks justice absolute and she fights. So you have two different groups, each having their idea of what justice is. And we have no truce right away. Four of cups is a rejection of offer. Six of cups. You could have intermediaries going there from France and UN, etc., trying to stop this from escalating into a wider war. And you can see that with a six of cups moving into fourth position. It's an energy coming in. Let's get back to the bargaining table and six of swords. I'm telling you, Iran wants to be paid. This is about being shut out of the Abraham Accords. And so basically what they're saying is give us a bunch of money, just like you give Egypt a bunch of money not to kill Israelis. You got to pay us not to kill Israelis. We, and you can take the money out of your profits from the Abraham Accords. But the only problem with that deal with Iran is that, sure, we understand you're upset and you want to kill Jews, so we'll pay you not to kill Jews. The only problem with that is that what are they going to do with the profits? They're going to pay off. I don't like that. Gosh, you see, I knew that was going to come up. See how I do that? <laughs> um, what are they going to do with the money? Oh, well, they swore that they weren't going to use the money to build up their weapons. Come on, man. Walking away, their enemy is strong. Israel hopes and fears who will win, like Ace of Wands. Member Wands are all about territory. Look at that Six of Pentacles. I don't like that. It is a justice card, but it can also be about basically paying people or uh, meeting out justice. Look at this fear of war here. We're going into war. We're going into war. And um, I see more troops mobilized. You can see here's fighting. Here's the war. Knight of Wands is quick, swift war. Israel has a lot of help. I see people from all over the world even trying to enlist in the IDF. The IDF has like open enlistment. A lot of people from other countries join just like the French. Uh, you can see uh, the Knight of Wands over Israel with strength. That's like pushing forward. Go west, young man. So um, people are not going to let that happen to Israel. It's just that's what I would say. And um, I just wish that evangelical Christians would come to understand, step back and put your emotions aside. Evangelical Christians and ultra-Orthodox Jewish people are ultra-extreme forms of any type of religion are actually bringing us closer to Armageddon, and they don't realize it. 
and they think that they're helping. They think these extremists are helping Israel and Iran, but what they're doing is they're going to get us all obliterated. Ben Shapiro, you know, he makes everybody think that Israelis are a bunch of right-wing nutjobs. And um, I find it very disturbing because he doesn't speak for me as an Israeli and he doesn't speak to any of my friends. I mean, he sound, he, uh, and I, I resent the fact that he's, he, he's so arrogant. He thinks that he can speak for Israel. And the other thing that I find, uh, and he's always provoking fights and he's a snob. He's got like this attitude, like he, you know what I'm saying? So, um, I just think there's a lot of people that think that they speak for Israel and they don't. We have to remove uh, Hamas from Rafa because uh, you have to, I mean, like wrap your head around this folks. I mean, like imagine people parachuting into Los Angeles and gunning down hundreds and thousands of U.S. citizens, tying them to uh, logs, raping them and shooting them in the head and dragging hundreds more back to Mexico. And people are telling you not to hurt the Mexicans. I mean, it, it's just, <laughs> and uh, give back California and Texas. From the river to the sea, we will take Mexico. Mexico will take, we're gonna take Oregon. We're gonna take, and France is gonna take Louisiana, gosh darn it. Um, so it's not, uh, give Judea back to the, oh, wait a minute, right? Give Judea back to the, yeah. Anyway, people know how I feel about all this. Uh, yeah, religious extremism, you know, religious extremism all the way. It's dangerous. I think, I mean, like, to be honest with you, I think people are free to believe whatever they like, but it's like tone down the rhetoric, you know what I'm saying? All right, we're going to check about Israel security. And we got to have the normal Israelis start to talk that are not crazy. I mean, like, pot is legal in Israel. You guys don't believe that. Ben Shapiro and the APEC, they've gone so right wing. It's like, I want, and normal Jewish people are like uh, running from the MAGAs. They took over APEC. And we need to just say, calm down, folks. We need to take back APEC. Uh, it's like, it's almost like they're saying, if you are not MAGA, you do not support Israel. It's like a type of gaslighting. And then when you say, well, let's go ahead and let's re review objectively whether or not Trump's policies have been good for Israel. Let's just objectively, intellectually, look at what he did in terms of troop movements. Uh, well, you know, he did a, a lot of favors for Hezbollah. He did a lot of favors for Iran, Syria, and uh, Russia from what we see. I don't think that uh, Hamas and Putin could have pulled that off with Iran without a little help from Trump pulling U.S. troops out. Think about it, 150 ballistic missiles pointed at us thanks to Donald Trump. So the U.S. is going back in. But it never would have happened if you don't piss people off and then go home and then leave your allies uh, to clean up the mess. Let's see about Israel. Israel's going to be okay. I mean, they broke through the fences. They came to Israel. They killed and shot and killed and raped and murdered, drugged out of their minds, celebrating that they were killing Jews and raping, shooting people in the head while they were raping them, drugged out of their minds, dragging dead bodies back, chopping body heads off. And regular Gazans came out and started stealing everything they could. In fact, the majority of people running off with anything that they could carry were regular Gazans because they thought it was great. They were celebrating. 
So again, people have to realize this was a extremist cult. You have plenty of film footage of, reg of kids, little children, seven, five and seven, taking bicycles. Uh, one woman, she was tied up. The terrorist came, he took four things of milk. She said, for, for you, you killed, shot my husband because you wanted four things of goat milk. You know, they were taking things out of people's refrigerators. It's not our world, but we can't be a naive and pretend it doesn't exist. Well, I don't want to live in that world. I'm going to tell myself this story. Well, unfortunately, <clears throat> that's not how it works. The other bad news is that it starts with Israel. It doesn't end with Israel because what Iran is saying is that they're declaring war on Israel and they're first the Jews, then the Christians. So they're happy to kill Jews, but they're also happy to kill you. I mean, I, I shouldn't laugh. Um, so America is now in the middle of this. Europe is in the middle of it. Poverty over the area and two of swords. People are kind of shutting down from the violence. People are going to have to make a decision. This constant talking about Armageddon is actually manifesting the crazy. People love it. They're like, yay, Armageddon, judgment. Stop with the crazy. We need sanity to come in and not people creating. Look, armistice is right over it. I, I see strong energy over Israel that's going to bring armistice, the fool card. People are very reliant on Israel. The great irony is, is that they're very reliant on Israel for food and resources. A great deal of food is produced in Israel that's actually... Uh, is exported to uh, parts of the Middle East and beyond. You can see here, agriculture card and also green economy comes. They've also exported a lot of the technology. They're gonna pay, there's gonna be some financial deal. It's, I'm telling you, they don't care about the Palestinians. It's about the Abraham Accords. This keeps coming up. Um, where they're at right now, the heavy load healing. There's an incredible fear in Tehran of retaliation. I've been seeing possibility of attacks in the United States and other and the West. We could see more attacks outside of Israel. I'm seeing more I'm seeing the US potentially attacks. It's like we're getting so close to peace you know, the rebuild, everything positive, and there are, they don't want peace. We have a time of the empress. There is great wealth that will come to Israel. There's a feeling that the wealth will be shared. I'm very concerned about this. The sanctions have created incredible anger. The sanctions have only made Iran angrier. The sanctions have made Iran angrier at the U.S. and Israel and now at their partners in the Abraham Accords. It goes back to this idea of jealousy, that people become jealous if they feel, well, you got the ice cream and I didn't, or feeling it's okay to go into someone's home and steal their goat's milk or steal their kid's tricycle because I have a right to steal your property. If you believe that's real then in your mind, it's not theft, right? Um, financial compensation. So there are a lot of people that are not going to be okay with that because it's a feeling of rewarding them for bombing Israel. But at the same time, uh, it's, there's a, a peace offering here. So for that reason, it could be that some kind of temporary truce Look, if people say it's going to be peaceful for seven years and another, are we, are we prophecy that? Well, you know what? If they get, start giving money and making it profitable for these people not to bomb Israel, then that could very likely happen because what they'll be doing is building up their own infrastructure and economy. And then the next time they strike, they'll be bigger and worse than ever. 
because they've been making a profit. So they're sitting, they, sit, they hate Israel so much that they will sit and bide their time. And they are convinced that when they do strike, remember what I had said when I went into the energy of Iran and Hezbollah, they're ready to go. I don't like having to say that, tell people news like that. They're ready to go. They really want to go. They want to go now. They're disappointed. It's like puppy going to the park, right? That This is, you know, uh, you really have to stretch yourself as a remote viewer. Like when I put myself in the shoes of Hezbollah troops at the border, I wanted to go in. I wanted to go. I want to fight Israel. So, you know, that's a feeling I've never had before, right? Um <laughs> wanting to go to war. Uh, so you do sometimes when you bounce into somebody like a typical Hezbollah, it's like you feel the energy of excitement and war and we're going to finally do it. We're going to, we're going to take Israel and drive them all in the sea and it's all going to be part of Islam. And then of course we'll have to convince them to practice the right Islam. And of course they won't like our version. So we'll have to kill them too. Um, it's a really interesting world that you go into. NATO troops deployed to the Middle East and Ukraine. I think so. I think we're in World War III. But <clears throat> the problem with mediators is that they want peace to the point where it could be potentially helping the enemy down the road. People don't like me because I tell them the truth, you know. And they want to, they may not want to hear the truth. <clears throat> NATO in Ukraine. Russia is in serious trouble because of their own economic problems. It looks like the dam, the dam that fell. Sorry, I'm having a reaction to my cat. <clears throat> the dam. Um, collapsed in southeast Russia, is that correct, in parts of Kazakhstan. So they've withdrawn uh, something like, what is it, 70,000 people and uh, possibly a million more. So I feel like Russia cannot cut a break financially. I feel like Russia's bankrupted. You know, um, Ru I see Ukraine heels, prison, locked up, can't get out. It's one disaster after another, like a hundred thousand, you know, a couple hundred thousand people needing to flee a, a dam. Now there's evidence it was sabotage. I'm telling you, the closer those kids get to graduation to June, the more terrified those high school students are going to be, and you're going to be seeing some desperate behavior in Russia, and you're going to be seeing some crazy sabotage. But yeah, you know, unscrewing things. Yeah, looks like the workers of that dam may have done some naughty things. So the dam broke, and um, as a result, it has completely flooded the area, which has been uh, disastrous for Russia. We're talking about billions and billions and billions of dollars to repair it. It's the time of truth for Russia. Um, yes, peacekeeping troops are coming in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. cooperation, incarceration. Yeah, I think so. I think so, you guys. I think, uh, I think NATO's coming in. Wow. You know, I, I, God, I'm so frustrated. I need to talk. Can I get some counseling? You guys, I need counseling as a remote viewer. Can I, can you guys give me some counseling? Well, Israel should not be killing Palestinian children and Hamas should not be teaching their children that 
if they shoot a pregnant Jewish woman in the face, they'll go to Allah. Uh, and then we won't have to, you know, kill anybody, right? To protect ourselves. You know, don't use your children as human shields. Don't teach them that killing Jews is wonderful. And don't, you know, don't have your children watching Nazi Sesame Street. Y'all seen Sesame Street looks like in, um, have you guys seen Sesame Street in, in Gaza? It's called Kill the Jews. Yeah, it's really... Um, the kids grew up, right? Um, you should take a look at uh, what the uh, Hamas uh, children's, children's uh, it's, yeah, it's just, uh, it's like this Mickey Mouse character that sits around talking about all the terrible things that happened to him because of the Jews, and it always ends with them taking knives and stabbing him to death or something. He, he, he dies every episode, I think. Um. But yes, you're right. No one should hurt, hurt a child. And uh, you got, if somebody is teaching their child those things, then I think that the child should be removed from the home. But, you know, that's probably what's going to happen. I mean, Gaza will probably go under mostly Bahrain and Dubai. And they have programs to deprogram people from these types of extremist cults. They have it in Saudi Arabia too, because Saudi Arabia created this. This is, Wahhabism on stare on drugs. They, this is like, they're even crazier than ISIS. So I think that they are trying desperately to clean up the monster that they created. Uh, I think that that's what's going on, which is to try and uh, put this monster back in the box. And it's been interesting to see some of the deprogramming particularly countries like um, United Arab Emirates, where they're trying to roll out more tolerant, modern approaches to Islam. And um, yeah, it's, it's nice to see, it's nice to see uh, more moderate uh, forms. There's a lot of positive things in Islam. So hopefully, so hopefully people will move away from all the craziness. All right. So let's take a look at U.S. troops in the Middle East. Um, Biden's bringing U.S. troops to the Middle East. Judgment. You know what? Let me see something. I'm telling you, I don't like this. I just. They're arguing. Here's what Iran is arguing. Here is what Russia is arguing that they're this angry at the West because of sanctions. And so if we would just give them money, then they would stop being so angry at Israel and the United States. And then you can just pay them. You can pay Russia and not, and, and uh, Syria and they want a piece of the pie. America is, I'll tell you what the problem with the United States, though, the amount of, of um, land that has to be monitored, they could probably do it with satellites. But the big problem they're having here is scanning the seas because the amount of the attacks by Houthi and by Iranians, it's such a wide area the Arab, uh, the Gulf, and the whole area that, um, you know, Six of Swords, it's a wide, wide field when you go into the Six of Swords energy of the U.S. and its, uh, its boats. And uh, it, it's also trying to intercept these drones via some of the boats and uh, that are uh, stationed. But uh, 
I feel like it's such a wide amount of territory, it's going to be very hard for the United States to control it. The only way to control it is to take out the source, and the source is Iran. The opposition waiting for ships to come in and King, uh, Queen of Pentacles, they feel like they did this for economic reasons. You can see treasure trove. They feel like we are, that the West is sitting on a, a multi-trillion dollar golden goose with uh, Israel and the Middle East having peace. And it will completely open up trade between those countries and will make Iran, Syria, and Russia obsolete in some areas. And that's that's terrifying to them. You can see here, final outcome again is the Eight of Pentacles. They want to be paid. How do you guys feel about that? We have Joel Tilson saying protection money, no way. Okay, but didn't we do the same thing with Egypt? where Egypt was paid a large amount of money to not attack Israel after the Yom Kippur War when Sadat and Carter and Begin had to have that conversation. So what did people take away from that? Well, if we can if we can bribe or pay Egypt not to kill us, then that works. Here's all the reasons why it won't work with Iran. Number one, they don't share a border with Israel. So it's not like it's a trade border where we have to get along. We have to get along with Jordan. We have trade with Jordan. We have to get along with Egypt. We have trade with Egypt. Iran is not a trade partner. They're not close to us. They're not Lebanon. We, we don't have a, we share a border with Lebanon. We share a border with Syria. We share a border with Egypt, Jordan. And so it's vital that we have good relationships with those countries, but Iran is not a border country. So, um, that's a problem. And then the other reason why it's not, I don't think it's going to work is because Iran's hostility towards uh, the United States and Israel is so entrenched that um, more money would just make them rich, richer Nazis, basically. Let's see if we're looking at an inevitable collapse of Iran. Iran, they did, they've really screwed themselves. This is Iran. Yeah, they have, uh, it violated international laws and actually international law falls with Israel. They have a right to retaliate because they attacked a sovereign nation. You can see, um, in fact, now Israel is justified to, because Hamas is their proxy army. So um, Israel rejects a peace offer. You can see here they've completely shot themselves in the foot. Judgment, strength falls on Israel. They had a lapse in judgment. That's the best way I can say it because... Um, this is very bad for them. This is so bad for them that we could see troops in Tehran. If that's the reaction that they wanted, um, then, then that's what they could have. They could find themselves in that situation. They could find NATO, U.S. troops, and Israeli troops in, in, in Tehran. Yeah. I feel frustrated. You know, I joke and say, wow, can I get some therapy? But 
Five years. Of people telling us what they were going to do. And could we have prevented it? You know, I do feel a little bit like Cassandra sometimes because people just wanted to believe in Trump. Trump, Trump, Trump. I lost friends over it. He's great for Israel. We got an embassy to move from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Wee! <laughs> And what did that do for our security? Your watch, it's like, you know, it's like the ring, precious. It's like, I tell Christians that keep talking, blabbering about the embassy. Listen, folks, is the embassy your golden calf? Is that what the embassy was for you, a golden calf? You worshipped it. You were fixated on it. You should have been less emotional. You should have been looking at U.S. troop movements. They worshipped it, right? And so that's also one of the things I really like about studying the Torah is you don't have to take it literally, but boy, does it teach us a lot about human nature. This idea that we can often fall in love with the golden, shiny, flashy, whatever, the Rolex watches in Hollywood. Remember that? Stupid right? And Diddy and the power, it's all, that's the concept of the golden calf, or the embassy is going to be in Jerusalem, like who cares, right? Um, and you're so fixated, and they're still fixated, Trump 2024 is good for Israel, because they're completely enamored with the golden calf. And the only way they're going to snap out of it is if you smack them around a little bit and show them U.S. troop movements and say, that's a golden calf. Now, the other problem that we're seeing energetically is closer to home, right? Let's go closer to home and start talking about the word on the street. So here are some of the problems with Biden getting reelected. I know you want him to get elected, most of you, but let's talk about the problems with him being reelected. Number one, if you talk about the keys to the election, right? The keys, there are like seven keys, right? So how do you get elected? Right now it's looking pretty good for him, but what are the things that could take him out? Third party candidate that performs well in states where uh, he uh, Biden only won by one or two points. So that means that uh, you're going to, uh, J uh, JFK Jr., uh, you're going to be seeing a lot of him in which states? You're going to be seeing him in Michigan, right? Because uh, they know that people, uh, uh, progressives and certain people are unhappy with Biden. They're going to, so you can expect, uh, Michigan, you can expect, uh, Florida, Pennsylvania, right? And that's basically their strategy. All they have to do is shave a couple points off of Biden in key swing states and Trump wins. So what is the number one complaint that people are thinking are talking about? They're talking about rents being priced out, the fact that over a million people are living on the streets, and that inflation is worse than ever, right? So on the one hand, the uh, the, the general feeling about Biden is, yeah, he did good things if you had student loans. Um, there were many good things under this president. But you have to also understand that Biden is exactly where Jimmy Carter was in 1980, in the sense that the economy had tanked under Jimmy Carter. And what we learned uh, under Carter, the reason why Carter wasn't reelected, is the economy stupid. And it really had to do with that huge economic slump we saw uh, that happened um, 
that cost Carter the election and uh, people wanted the Reaganomics, right? He was going to be great for uh, you, the U.S. economy. I came back to the U.S. and there was cocaine everywhere and gangs and I didn't recognize my country. It was like, what the heck happened while I was gone? It was, uh, you know, the country that the problems we had under Carter were, were much gentler problems than the problems that we had under uh, Bush Sr. when I got back to the United States. So um, people don't know, necessarily vote for what's best for them. And, um, you know, you're, you're, uh, right now, Florida is the worst place to buy if you're thinking about buying anywhere. Uh, they were talking about South Florida. It's just tanking. You can't get insurance. And uh, by the way, in Florida, a lot of people are being trapped by their condos. They can't sell their condos and the HOAs keep going up. I'm never buying a condo after I heard about what was going on in Florida. People are so desperate that they can't even afford a, a uh, manufactured home. So my feeling is I just rent, stay nomadic, and I stuff everything into index funds. Like I'm going index funds with high dividends. And I, I'm not buying anything at dividends. <laughs> this is just me personally. And that's because I do listen and I, but the, but the thing I'm listening to, I don't want to live in a magical kingdom by myself. I want to hear why people are unhappy with Biden and why they're not voting for Biden. And I think it's very important if you are a, Dem I'm a registered Democrat. I've been a registered Democrat since I was 18. So I do want to, I sincerely want people to tell me why they're angry at Biden and they're not talking about abortion. They're talking about the fact that breakfast cereal boxes are now this tiny when they used to be this big. And yet they're three times, they're talking, it's the money, it's money, inflation, and the, and the price of rent. That is what it's, it's the economy stupid. And so if something dramatic doesn't happen soon, that combined with a third party in some of those depressed, uh, it states that are uh, where Biden uh, uh, only won by, uh, say, a, a percentage point or whatnot, he could theoretically lose. So I'm just going to check. Uh, that's just the theory. Like when you go into this, how could we lose it? If we don't address the problem of inflation, if it doesn't get any better, if they feel like he's an old man who's senile and out of control in the middle of a war, uh, all of these things could cost uh, the Democrats. Biden. Biden's hands are tied. He has to hang something up. His opposition is also going down. Trump is going down. Look at that tower. His hopes and fears to be victorious. His final outcome is nine of swords. I'm telling you, they are deliberately sabotaging him in the house. They are trying to make him a lame duck. People yelling out there. I'm telling you, Biden can still win. Biden's because he's got the magician. Uh, temperance and sobriety over the opposition. A new beginning for Biden. And he's got the nine of pentacles. But just as Obama did, his numbers did slip the second time he was reelected. We could see a little bit of a slip. I think, though, Biden still wins. One of the reasons is because there's just a total collapse of Trump's you know, I think Trump is going to be lucky if he gets 30, 35 percent of the vote because he's facing incarceration. In fact, I would argue that incarceration is probably inevitable for Trump at this point. And it's always been inevitable. It always ends with him in some kind of facility, like a senior facility for seniors who are criminals.
Um, the last time I went forward in the future, I found myself on a military base as Trump and that I had been incarcerated on a military base to discourage looky loos and because it was better for security. Yeah. So some, it was almost like the prison housed one prisoner him. Is that horrible? What a horrible way to die on a prison base somewhere. Um, let's look at Trump. Yeah, that's how it ended. He was like in this tower in the middle of, and it was like Highway 90 in the middle of nowhere. It's like, is that the, is that the penitentiary that houses the former, I heard, yeah, how old is he? Is he still alive? It had that kind of like, it could go down like that. It's the only way you could do it, though. You couldn't put him under house arrest because there'd be too many security concerns. You couldn't put him in a regular prison, but you could house him in a unit, a, a single unit on a military base. Just, it was just a horrible vision. Of course it was a horrible vision. And a horrible way to die, don't you think? He's under criminal investigation for uh, some money he received recently. So that tells me, that, I don't know, is this his bond money? There's something about his bond money. He's in trouble with his bond money. He's in serious trouble with his bond money. Oh my God. He's in trouble with his money. Look at this. With the money, the guy with the money. Dang. Holy crap. And then the law comes after him. I simply don't know how Trump can can, can evade prison. I, I just don't know how that would even be possible. It always ends with incarceration. Yeah. I mean... It's, it, it's like it's the end of the line for him in the next couple of, well, they say everything comes to a head by August and that would make sense because he has to do this trial and then it'll go for a couple of weeks. It should end sometime mid-May and then uh, the other trials are starting. So yeah, by August it should, yeah. All right. Well, I think I'm going to call it a night. I just, uh, I don't want to be Debbie Downer, you guys. I want us to be optimistic. I believe that good always wins, but I also think that we can't be naive and just, um, you know, it's be very careful about which side you, you um, just don't be fooled. Things are not always how they seem. That's, what I would say, but um, we will get through this, my dears. We will get through this. We we have a good president, and I think we will come through this. All right, thank you, everybody. If you're trying to get in for a reading with me, I'll be back at work on Tuesday. I won't be back on Monday. I'll be back at work on Tuesday if you need to see me, and also if you need to see me for a telemedicine appointment. The information is below. All right, love and light, everyone. God bless, and we'll see you next time. All right.